ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट ओवर लेक्चर नाउ ओवर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज अबाउट द नेटवर्क इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड बिफोर गोइंग इन द डिटेल वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द नेटवर्क एंड कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ नेटवर्क व्हिच थिंग्स आर नेसेसरी फॉर मेकिंग अ नेटवर्क सो वी विल स्टार्ट ओवर लेक्चर दैट इज अबाउट about the network infrastructure and first thing is that we must know what is computer network as we know computer is a machine and uh, we can perform any type of activity by using the computer but whenever we want to share some resources of computer and we have not connected over computer with another computer or with another device we will be unable to access anything so by sharing any resource any file any data or for communication we have to use a some link that link is known as computer network so whenever we will join the computers two computers 100 computers 1000 computers minimum two computers and maximum that and there can be thousands of computer that are interconnected with each other so they can share the resources like printer cds hard disk or they can exchange the file or can perform or can are allow the electronic communication these are known as computer networks now computer networks can be or the computers can be joined by using cables or the network can be wireless and uh, wireless network so for wireless network we have to use the signals that signals can be radio wave satellites or infrared light beams so different type of signals can be used for the wireless networks a computer network also referred as data network as we are sharing the data so it is a series of interconnected nodes whenever we are talking about the nodes nodes means anything that is attached inside the computer that can be a server that can be a client that can be a modem so that is a node so nodes are in, uh, interconnected and they can transmit or exchange the data that data can be in any form in text form in pictures form in voice form so we can share the data that's why sometimes computer networks are also known as data networks now there are different components of computer uh, computer network the basic components are server clients peers transmission media network interfa interface cards connected uh, devices whenever we want to join more uh, computers in a network we have to use the connecting devices the first thing is that servers servers are also some kind of computers by using but these are the powerful computers who uh, these computers have high speed processors a huge amount of memory is they have a huge amount of memory so they have maximum resources and they facilitate the other clients or other users whenever we demand anything from a server the server replies us back and provide the resource or provide the data that we are asking for so server are high configuration computers that manages the resources of the network that can be a file server if that is a file server all the files are kept on that server if that is a database server all kind of data will be available on that server and if that is a print server we can give the commands of print to that server and they will facilitate the user and can take the print of the user so the network operating system is typically installed in server and so they give user access to the network resources as we know over working of computer entirely depends on the type of operating system that is installed inside the computer so if we want to make a computer or we want to use a computer as a server we have to install a operating system that facilitate that make it possible so they can share the resources are they these kind of net, uh, operating systems are known as network operating system in next slides we will discuss which operating systems can be act as a network operating system now the next one are clients clients who want to use the services of servers these are the clients so clients are the computer that are sending the request like whenever we are typing anything on a google 
website the request will be go towards the google server so we are the clients and the uh, computer who is facilitating us are answering over query that is a server so clients are the persons are the machines who um, that are sending the request to the servers for any service or for any data if they want to access any resource they will send the request to the servers no peers sometime we are interconnecting the computers and the computer act both as a server as well as as a client so they can facilitate the other computer and they can also send a request for any service so these are the peers when there is no priority to any machine inside a network a that kind of network is peer to peer network so in that network the all the computer or all the nodes acts, acts as a peers they can also act like a server and they can also act like a client next part of component of network is transmission media transmission media means through the way through which we are transferring our data from source to destination that can be a wire that can be any signals through which we can transfer over data so we have to make it possible so the data can travel in form of waves or in form of signals so for the signals we are using the guided media that are the physical media wired media and unguided media that can be in form of infrared waves microwaves so these are the examples or types of unguided media so we can connect over computers with the wires or with the waves or with the signals so these wires are these medias like satellites microwaves or infrared waves these are the transmission media by using these transmission medias the data can be traveled from source to destination or from one network to another or from sender to receiver network interface cards nic cards these cards are placed on motherboard whenever we want to connect any computer with the network we need a hardware that is relevant to the network or that will provide the platform to which we can connect the wires so these are the network interface card that provides the network facility inside the computers so these are also called nic cards lan cards lan adapter physical network interface uh, network adapters network interface controllers there are multiple names that can be used for nic cards so nic cards are the hardware components used to connect the computer with the network if uh, any computer or any motherboard have no nic card we will not be able to connect any wire with um, ethernet wire or modem wire with over computer so we cannot connect over computer or over device with the network or inside the network so we need a hardware that is known as network interface card whenever we want to connect the computer inside a network so <clears throat> it is installed in a computer circuit board the main board that is motherboard that provides a network connection to the computer due to the popularity and low cost of ethernet standards the network interface is built directly into the motherboard in almost all new computers now whenever we purchase any computer or any laptop any macbook the and and that contains nic card inside the motherboard so it's very easy to connect the net uh, these devices towards the network now different uh, connecting devices can be used whenever we are connecting a network with another network or can we want to connect multiple computers in a network we have to use the connecting devices that can understand how they will identify the device or uh, to which computer the message have to be have to be delivered so these are different kind of connecting devices that can be a middleware between the networks or the computer by binding the network media together some common connecting devices are routers bridges hubs repeaters gateways switches each and every device has its own purpose now we will study these devices one by one the first one is hub nowadays we are not using uh, the hubs the hub is only the device that splits a network connecting among the 
multiple computers whenever we want to join multiple computers with each other that is a central device that is known as hubs and that known as hub and uh, the hub has multiple slots in which we can connect different computers it works similarly to a distribution center when a computer requests information from one network to a specific computer like there are 10 pieces inside a network and we want to receive or we want to communicate with p2 or p3 we have to send the request and that request go towards the hub and that hub will transmit that request towards all the computers inside the network so they will broadcast that request to the entire network after that every computer checks either that relevant to that computer or not if the request is relevant to the, any specified computer the computer will accept that otherwise it will reject that or drop that so it and there will be a uh, resource wastage or we can say that a lot of time is consumed whenever uh, each and every computer is checking either the request belongs to that computer or not so that's why nowadays we are not commonly we are not using the hubs however <laughs> such network such com network components nowadays are very less in circulation and being replaced by more advanced communication devices like nowadays we are using the routers our switches can be used inside Uh, instead of hubs this hub is used to connect uh, multiple connection that come from different branches like inside a single building if we want to connect multiple computers we can use the hubs as a central device the next one is switch switch has also the same purpose all the connect uh, devices can be connected by using the switch now what is difference between the hub and switch the difference is that the switch will first identify the computer by the ip address internet protocol address or by the mac address that is given by the uh, manufacturer of any device that is built in address like each and every device has its own identity number and whenever any message is delivered to another device the switch for, uh, first identify that which uh, uh, to which device it will deliver the message so the switch will only send that message to a specified device it will not broadcast that message to the ne um, whole network or towards all computers inside the network so switch is a component that helps devices to connect the network so that they can transfer data to other connected devices these network switches are identical to the network hubs but a switch has more advanced features like it have the ability to identify the addresses of the devices that are part of computer network or that are attached inside our network it does not broadcast entire data it will first identify then it will send the data the advanced features of switch imply that the network switch first inspects the incoming packet and determines its source it will check who is the sender and then it will check the destination address to whom it the message must be sent and the uh, routes after that sends the data it will prefer the shortest path or the most um, smooth path for sending the data so that that packet or that data will be travel according to that path a network switch is also called a switching hub now router router is another hardware component that are used to connect the networks with each other so routers operate at network level of osi model that is a protocol of computer network and o uh, in next slide we will discuss the osi model so at the osi model network layer we can use the routers using them to send packets over the network using the logical addresses some addresses are known as physical addresses like the manufacturers assign some unique identities to the devices that are over physical addresses and some addresses are logical that are uh, assigned by the network operators or network administrations towards the different devices these are logical addresses any data which travels from one network to another network that is sent in form of packet like we can say that we are making a chunks from the whole data and these are known as the packet because we want to travel the data from one source to another source in a high speed or we want to 
send the accurate data so we will make the packets or we will make the chunks from the data and then that packets will be travel from source to destination the router receives such packet data and forward it to the destination device after after analyzing the hidden information in the data packet whenever we are talking about the network sometimes there are so much important messages inside over that are traveling from source to destination for that purpose we can send over messages in a encoded form so that is also the responsibility of a router whenever the destination person or the destination device receives the data the router will trans uh, translate that data that uh, so the destination device can understand what is written inside that code or that packet so this networking device is used to connect different networks either it is wired or wireless that have both side uh, both type of functionality they have the ports in which we can attach the ethernet cable or they the routers also have the signals uh, wi-fi signals by using that by wi wi-fi signal we can attach the wireless devices with the routers the next device is modem modem stands for modulator and demodulator as we know at the start we was using the telephone network for the communication of network or as a inter, um, computer network we was using the telephone lines as we know the telephone lines was already available from uh, one source to another source city to uh, city to city and country to country so the telephone line was a source by using that source we was sending over messages over data from source to destination or from one computer to another computer so at that time we was using the modems modem is also a hardware device the responsibility as we know in the form uh, in wires the analog signals can travel and uh, as we know the computer is a digital machine so they uh, the computer can only understand zero one so that is the responsibility of modem to convert the analog signal into digital signal and digital signal into analog signal when the data have to travel on the wires the modem will transfer that digital signal into analog signal and when the receiver receives that message through the wires then the it is also the responsibility of modem to convert that analog signals again into digital signals so the computer can understand what the message is so these uh, components allow a computer device such as router or switch to connect to the internet like we can use the nic card for connection of over computer or we can use the modem but nowadays we are not using the modem we are using we are not using internal modems external modems can be used nowadays like different type of modems are available in form of uh, that can also provide the facilities of router we can attach the devices with the wires and also we can attach over wireless devices by using that modems it converts or modulates an analog signals from a telephone cable wired into digital signal that a router or switch can easily recognize the data so that is intermediate device between the router and between the pc so they can only transferring are translating the data signals from one form to another form similarly when it converts outgoing digital data into an analog signal in a computer device such converting is called the demodulation that's why that is known as modulate and demodulate the speed of transmitting data by modem is modifiable like different speeds and different variety of modems are available like we can say that uh, that every modem has its own quality and that quality is how much speedily the modem can send the data from source to destination and that speed can be measured in bits per second the faster its speed the faster one can send and receive the information repeater as name indicates it will repeat over signal sometimes when we are transferring over data at a long distance there is interference between source to destination our interference can be uh, some so, uh, sort of noise inside the path so we have to use the repeaters when we are transferring over data from uh, at a long distance the repeater will copy the signals and whenever the signal becomes the weak it will also regenerates that signal so that is a stronger signal 
so the signal will transfer in a original form at the destination so a repeater is a powerful network component that is used to regenerate signals which signals the uh, uh, the signals that are the weak signals we can regenerate that signals by copying the structure of the signal with this the signal is fixed for a long time so that the strength of the signal remains stable repeater takes data signals from the communication medium and like from the wires or from the in form of uh, if we are making wireless communication that signal can be in form of a wave a radio wave or for in uh, or a infrared wave and amplifies them and send them back to the communication medium if the signal is weak it will make it a strong signal when signal becomes weak the this device copies the signal bit by bit and then regenerate it to its original strength for making the internet connection stable if we are uh, we are not using the repeaters the receiver will not receive the accurate message that is sent by the sender so repeaters are used in cables that have to cover distance up to 100 meters so uh, if we want to make a communication in the city or out of the city within out of the city so we can use the repeaters these components receive signals from cables like optical fiber coaxial cables and copper cables different type of cables can be used to make a computer network so we can use any type of cable that can be optical cable that can be a coaxial cable and that can be a copper cable now bridges bridges are used to connect more than two lands for making a larger network so this bridge is a device that has functionality that is that it filters the contact for which it reads mac address mac address is a physical address that is assigned by the manufacturer of the device for both source and destination the bridge connects two lands lands local area networks we will study what are the local area networks lands mans and wans in the next slides using the same protocol protocol means the rules through which we are connecting different computers so these are the protocol if two networks are using the same protocols we can join these two networks by using the bridges so these network components are very useful for for filtering the data load of the traffic either if we are using the device either that can handle the load that is coming towards that device or not for which they divide them into the segments or packets the bridge controls the data traffic of lands or other networks now the gateway like the name indicate gateway provides the security it will recognize either all the identified or all the authorized devices are communicating with each other or some of the unauthorized person is trying to access the network so this gateway is a hardware device that act as a gate with into network so it will check all the ip addresses or mac addresses of the receiving devices or the sending devices who is sending the message the gateway will check the addresses of that devices it can also be a router firewall server or any other device that enables traffic to flow in and out of the network so at the start in the traffic network traffic will be checked gateways are used to connect gateway to uh, used to connect networks based on different protocols like we have studied the bridge in which we have to combine the networks that are using the same rules like they are using the same way of arrangement of devices but if we have different kind of networks we can join that networks or connect that networks with each other by using the gateways as a bridge is used to join two similar types of networks similarly the gateway is used to join the dissimilar networks this gateway node is located at the edge of the network and all the data flows through it which enters or exits the network in addition it can translate received data that is received from outside network into a format or a protocol that can be identified by the devices within the internal network it is not only identifying the devices it all it is also converting the data that can be an understandable form by the devices that are the part of computer network now they these was the 
hardware components of a network. Now we will go towards the software components of network. In this, we are talking about the first and the uh, most important thing is that the operating system. That is a network operating system that is necessary to maintain a network setting inside any device. So the, in for a software component, the first component is network operating system. Network operating system is typically installed in the server and facilitate the workstation that can be any powerful computer that is part of our computer network to share files, database, application, printers, anything, any resource which we want to share that can be shared by using network operating system. Protocol. A protocol is a rule or guidelines followed by each computer for data communication. So there are some rules by following that rule, we can make it possible. Uh, we make communication possible from source to destination. So protocol, uh, protocol is a set of related protocols that are laid down for computer networks. Mo there are many protocols that can be used, but the most commonly are TCP, IP model and OSI model. Networking operating system, there are two types of operating system that can be used as a network operating system. The first one is peer to peer network in which each and every device, each and every node has a same access towards the network. All the devices can share the resources and can ask for the services. So peer to peer network operating system allow user to share network resources safe in a common accessible network location that can be available in a central position or in a central PC. In this architecture, our devices are treated equally in the terms of functionality. Peer-to-peer -peer usually works best for small to medium local area networks and is cheaper to set up. So low cost is required to maintain peer-to-peer -peer network. So that kind of uh, for that kind of networks we have to install the peer to peer operating system network operating system the next one is client server network operating system that provides the structure in which there is a server who is responsible for providing all the services and multiple clients can ask for the services so that uh, sort of architecture is client server architecture in this architecture, all functions and applications are unified under one file server that can be used to execute individual clients' actions regardless of physical location. Like if one uh, client is outside the city or outside the country, it is the responsibility of the server to facilitate that client. So client-server network tends to be most expensive because we have to establish long-distance networks so we can facilitate all the clients that are inside the city, outside the city or outside the country. So these are the most expensive to implement and requires a large amount of technical maintenance because we have to use the advanced components or advanced connecting devices for creation of these kinds of network. And advantage of client server model is that the network is controlled centrally. So we can provide a security inside that networks or we can maintain or easily manage all the things inside uh, in that kind of network. So making changes addition or um, addition to the technology is easier to incorporate. Now the protocols. Protocols means the rules by following that rules, we can make a communication possible. So as we discussed in start, we will discuss two important protocols. These are OSI model and TC, TCP IP protocol. First one is OSI model. That is only a logical model. There is no implementation of this model by using the basic and that model we can maintain or we can understand the other models like the TC, uh, TCP IP model is also based on OSI model. So uh, that is a detailed model and we can understand how the network can work or how the communication can be possible by using any model or any protocol. So OSI stands for open systems interconnection that is developed by ISO. That is a organization who developed that model and OSI model can be seen as a universal language for a computer networking. 
all of the person who wants to understand how the network can communicate or how communication can be possible inside a network they these researchers or scientists have to uh, understand the osi model it is based on the concept of splitting up a communication system into seven layers we are uh, we have divided all the communication in seven steps these are the first layer is or we can say that we whenever we are sending message we are going from top to bottom so application layer is the seventh layer of the osi model so this is only layer that directly interacts with the data from the user so we can say that the application layer is the layer in which we are using the devices or softwares through which we are sending the data like in uh, gmail like web browsers these are the applications by communicating with these application we can send over data so software application like web browsers and email clients rely on the application layer to initiate communication that is the first step whenever we are sending over data so that data will directly transfers to the seventh layer of over osi model the application layer is, is is responsible for the protocol and data manipulation that the software relies to represent mini, meaningful data to the user so we can say that whenever we are sending over data that is the responsibility of application layer to convert that data in a form that can be travel on in form of signals wirely or wired or wirelessly no presentation layer that is the sixth layer of osi model this layer is primarily responsible for preparing data now we are dividing over data in encryption form or we are encrypting over data in a form that cannot be understandable by a common person so that is the responsibility of presentation layer this layer is responsible for preparing data so it can be used by application layer in other words layer 6 makes the data presentable for the application to consume if we are going in the reverse manner the presentation layer will transfer the data towards the application layer so the application can understand that data the presentation layer is responsible for translation encryption and compression of the data session layer now that that is the responsibility of session layer layer to maintain the connection between the sender and the receiver so it will I, uh, the connection between the receiver and the sender is known as the session so this layer is is responsible for opening and closing communication between the two devices the time between when the communication is opened like started and ended is known as a session the session layer ensures that the session stays open long enough to transfer all the data being exchanged so it is the responsibility of the session layer to make it possible to maintain the session or to make it possible so the um, sender and the receiver can communicate properly and then promptly uh, prompt uh, promptly closes all the session in order to avoid wasting resources whenever the session layer is responsible to maintain the connection between the sender and the receiver now the transport layer next one is transport layer that is the fourth layer of osi model that is responsible to end to end communication so as we know the transport layer is responsible to receive the data from the source and uh, it will send the data towards the destination that data can be traveled in form uh, by using the wires or by using the signals so this include taking data from the session layer and breaking it into the before uh, traveling towards the wire it will divide that data in form of chunks or in form of segments the transport layer on the receiving device is responsible for reassembling the segments into the data the session layer can consume if we are reversing the communication like whenever we are going in the other direction the transport layer is also responsible to rearrange or recombine that chunks whenever that is sending that data to the fifth layer that is a session layer the transport layer is also responsible for flow control and error control flow control means the speed at which we are sending the data either that speed is stable or not or the user is 
facing the fast connection or using the fast connection and error connection if the data is not accurate that is the responsibility of transport layer to check that if there is any error it can demand for the retransmission of the data it can request the sender to retransmit the message either the message uh, so it can make uh, uh, some send that notification the received message is not correct or accurate now the next one is network layer the network layer is responsible for facilitating data transfer between two different networks whenever we are sending the data from one network to another network like we can consider that uh, if we are talking about the, the banks we can say that we are sending over data from one branch to another branch so if two devices communicating on a same network then the network layer is not used or these that layer is unnecessary the network layer breaks up the segments from transport layer into smaller units so again the data is divided into the units these units are known as packets and then it is the, the responsibility of network to break the uh, data into the packets or segments into the packets and again reassemble the packets to form a segment so the network uh, network layer also finds the best physical path for the data to reach the destination this is known as the routing data link layer if we are sending the message in the same network so the data link layer is responsible to send that message from one device to another device so whenever we are making communication in the similar, uh, similar network the data link layer acts as a network layer the data link layer takes packets from the network layer and breaks them into a smaller pieces called the frames like the network layer the data link layer is also responsible for flow control and error control and the last one or we can say that the first one when we are retransmitting the data or when the receiver will send the message towards the sender then the physical layer will be the first layer so the layer uh, that is uh, this layer includes the physical equipment like over computers over printers the nodes on which we are working these are the part of over physical layer such as cables switches this is also layer where the data gets converted into a bit streams uh, as we know the, that is the responsibility of nic card or a modem to convert over digital data into analog signal and analog data into zero one form in order how it makes to flow data from one uh, source to other source in osi model in order for human readable information to be transferred over a network from one device to another the data must travel down to the seven layers of osi model like seventh layer to first layer and whenever we are again sending the message then it travel up first layer to seventh layer tcp uh, tcp ip model that is also formed by using the osi model but that model has only four layers so it is designed to describe the function of communication system by dividing communication procedure into smaller and simpler components so that is designed by department of defense in 1960s and that is based on a standard protocols nowadays we are using most commonly used model is tcp ip model so it stands for transmission control protocol internet protocol so that is version of osi model first one is network access layer this layer correspond to the combination of data link layer and the physical layer first two layers of osi model will be combined and that is named as network access layer so both of the task will be performed in a single step it looks out for a hardware addressing and the protocols present in this layer allow for the physical transmission of the data now the next is internet layer the layer parallel to the function of osi model layer internet layer it defines the protocols which are responsible for logical transmission of data over the entire network like we can say that that we transfer the data from one network to another network now host to host layer 
this layer is parallel to the transport layer of the OSI model. So it is responsible to carry the data and send from source to destination and make it possible to uh, make it a error free delivery. Application layer, this layer forms the function of top three layers of OSI model, application presentation and session layer. So it is the responsibility of application layer to provide the application by using that application, we can send the data and then present the data in the form so the receiver can understand and maintain a connection between sender and the receiver. It is responsible for node-to-node -node communication and controls user interface specification. No uses of network. A lot of uses are uh, network are there. Our advantages of network are so many. So the commonly used uh, um, uh, common use of networks are file sharing. Without any network, we cannot share any data file, any image file. Nothing can be shared along with uh, in among the pieces or among different devices. Application sharing. If we want to share any application, any software we have to make a network. Hardware sharing, like if we want to share printer, scanner, hard disk, we can share that hardware by using the computer network. Client server model, which enables data to be stored on the server. And that can be a unique data. Like we cannot say that the uh, someone is using another file, other one is using another file. The client will have a updated file and everyone is using and updating the same file where end user devices or clients can access that data. Voice over internet protocol, which enables user to send voice data through the internet protocols. So we can make voice communication possible as in previous time, we can only use the telephone lines by uh, for the communication. Nowadays, we can use uh, computers for the voice communication as well as for the video communication. Communication which include video, text, and voice that can be in form of message or can be in form of voice or short clips, e-commerce. We can purchase and uh, sell the things by using the internet. Gaming, we can play different games. I, although we are sitting at same place or for, uh, at the different place. How computer network work as we studied by using all these components, it is possible to make it possible so the computer uh, network can work computer networks operate using a varying set of hardware and software so there are different components of hardware and software that make working of network possible all packet switched network use tcp ip to establish a standard means of communication that layer uh, that model is responsible to make the communication possible each endpoint in a network that can be any hardware device that can be a server that can be a client has a unique identifier that is used to indicate the source or destination of the transmission that can be IP address or that can be MAC address. IP address, internet protocol address and MAC address media access control that MAC address is assigned by the manufacturer of the device. Endpoint nodes which are used for routing purpose include switches and routers, servers, personal computers, phones, network, printers, and other peripheral computing devices as the, uh, well as the sensor. So uh, all these things can be attached by using the networks. A network capacity is how much traffic the network can support, like how many people can send a request to the server at the same time like 100 persons, 200 persons, 300 persons. So that is the load, how uh, uh, much load can be managed by a computer network. Network capacity is measured in term of bandwidth. Bandwidth is quantified by the theoretical maximum number of bits per second that can be passed to a network device. Now different kinds of computer networks can be used that can be Managed are categorized by the size or the accessibility, how much access is inside the network. So we can make the categories of different computer networks. The smallest network is local area network that is limited in a single building. Like if we are uh, we want to make a network inside a, a single branch of a bank, we will make a local area network. 
whenever we are joining different lands that will make a metropolitan area network that is a man so the limit of the metropolitan area network is within city when we will join different lands and mans that makes a van van means wide area network so the excess of wide area network is all over the uh, outside the country even uh, we can access the network components so internet is the best example of wide area networks are when the next one is storage area network when we connect our join network our uh, storage devices by using the wires that network is known as storage area network personal area networks like whenever we are connecting the devices by using bluetooth or infrared that kind of network is known as personal area network vlans wire uh, wireless lans wireless local area network like whenever we are establishing any network by uh, within a building by using the wires that is known as lans local area network when we are establishing that connection within a building uh, without wires that is known as wlan or wireless local area network now network topologies topologies means the arrangement how we are attaching the computers with each other in which layout so physical arrangement of computer is known as the topologies there are several different types of network topologies and all are suitable for different purpose depending on overall network size of your choice of your purpose now the star topology as name indicates that has a central hub or central device and all other devices are attached to that device and the communication will be possible first uh, the request go towards the hub and then hub will transmit uh, trans uh, broadcast that message towards all the computers that are connected by using that hub so the star topology is the most common network topology is laid out so every node in a network is directly connected to one central hub that can be joined by using the coaxial cable twisted pair or fiber optic cable that is a cable or wired connection acting as a server this central node manages data transmission as information sent from any node to other on the network has to pass through the central one to reach its destination before sending the data from one computer to another first request will be sended to the hub so functions uh, and this hub is acting as a repeater which helps to prevent the data loss so that is the layout of star topology in which we are joining printer and different computers by using a hub bus topology as in the name indicates we can join multiple computers by a single wire that is known as bus topologies and the data can be travel in one direction only and uh, the um, wire that is a central wire inside that uh, network is known as backbone topology or backbone of that topology data flow on the network also follows the route of the cable moving in one direction only that is the layout of bus topology ring topology in which in that topology we are connecting the computers in form of a loop in form of a ring in a circular form so the data can travel in one direction only and if any one of the device is not working the next device will not receive the data the first message will be sent to the next computer the next computer will travel the data uh, send that data to the next computer so in with in that way we can transfer the data dual ring topology as we know the data can be transferred inside the ring topology in only one direction but whenever we make it possible to travel traveling of data in two direction or in both direction we have to use the dual ring topology by adding another cable in the setting or in the network so our network with ring topology is half duplex meaning data can only move in one direction the ring topologies can be made made full duplex by adding a second connection between the network nodes creating a dual ring topology 
so we are using the dual cable that's why we are saying that is a dual ring topology free topology in as name indicates that is like a tree in which we have the different branches of a central root so the first and uh, the main node or the main hub is used as a root and every root has two branches and by using that branches we can extend over network so we can make multiple branches of that tree so that tree topology structure gets its name from how the central node functions as a sort of trunk for the network with nodes extended outward in a branch like fashion however where each node in a star topology is directly connected to the central hub a tree topology has a parent child hierarchy to how the nodes are connected so we can say that there are different levels of connection in the tree topologies those connected to the central hub are connected linearly to other nodes so computers are attached to uh, another computers and these another computers are attached to the hubs so two connected nodes only share one mutual connection another route is not possible to move towards that node or that computer because the tree topology structure is both extremely flexible and scalable it is often used to wide area networks to support many spread out devices that is the structure of tree topology network is infrastructure we have studied what is network what are the protocols what are sending devices what are connection devices what is server what are the clients we have studied all the components of a network topology we have studied the topologies we have studied different types of network now we will we can easily understand what is meant by network infrastructure like different companies are following different it networks like they are establishing um network link or uh, online communication with their clients so that is a internet uh, it information technology network so the network infrastructure is a broader collection of fundamental components like that we can say that that is a updated form of a computer network in which we are providing different services or different organizations are providing different services to the clients that are connected to that organizations even that um, whenever we are talking about the remotely working like different persons are a uh, same organization can work from the home by using uh, that they can use the it network for that purpose so it networks means the organization geographically distributed like we can hire the uh, employees from any part of the country are from any content of uh, any uh, from any geographical location so it systems interconnected to exchange data and comprising the components of the interconnected it systems and their interface with the supporting data or communication networks like we can say the updated form of computer network is it network that can be used by the organization that have a multiple employees or a lot of users are lot of clients the simplest form of a network infrastructure typically consists of one, uh, one or more computers a network or a internet connection so we have to maintain a network and then we have to connect that network by using an internet connection we can use any hub both link the computers to the network connection because we have to establish a lan we can establish wan we can establish the man so we have to use the devices connecting devices that can join multiple networks with each other no again there are three components as we studied computer network also have the three components hardware software and protocols so same in the case of network infrastructure that is combination of hardware infrastructures software infrastructure and network services in hardware again uh, um, same as in computer network we are using the routers switches hubs repeaters gateways bridges and modems so all the connecting devices are the part of hardware infrastructures that we have studied in the start 
software infrastructure include monitoring and management tools and the operating system as we studied in computer network we was talking about the operating system that is network operating system says in the software infrastructure we are using how we can monitor like we have to judge either our network is working properly or not any of the client is missing from our network or not or some employee is trying to communicate with over network but the communication is not possible so we have to monitor either over network is secure or not or something is uh, someone is hacking over data by using a network or by using some resources so we have to monitor over network and we have to manage each and everything we have to manage the network traffic so there are different monitoring and management tools includes in software infrastructure as well as operating system is also the part of software infrastructure now network services in which we are using the firewalls the security systems and protocols like tcp ip now design network infrastructure design can help you to plan how to implement monitor and manage an it network like which type of protocol we are using which type of hardware we are using how much quality of the network we are we have to provide which capacity of bandwidth we need so a design can be created after identifying what are over demands so we have to identify what are the operational requirements how much capacity is required but quality of service how much over data is sensitive uh, if our data is so much sensitive and we don't want to uh, we don't want our data can be hacked by any other person we have to make the security strongest security for that data so we have to design over network infrastructure according to that pattern and flexibility how much we can add the new systems inside over computer network so that how much flexible over network is after that we will go towards the design network infrastructure design can help you to plan the it network more efficiently now which things are involved in infrastructure management network administration administrators implement network infrastructure management practices to ensure the network operates optimally by identifying performance bottlenecks problems and determine uh, determining the need of scaling to support like we want to add new devices or we want to replace the devices we can uh, switch the technology new tech uh, towards the new technology so that is the responsibility of network administrator it will uh, check either the uh, we have to scale up over network or not overall network infrastructure management focuses on the five things like first thing is that network infrastructure monitoring we have to check either our connection is stable all the devices are working properly all users can communicate with over servers are not so network infrastructure monitoring system continuously monitors the network and the they will reports the problem so for example our router may be receiving more traffic than it can handle so we have to use another router or we have to replace that router before it will crash so impacting the network availability if the router will not be able to work we will not, uh, make we will be unavailable to our clients configuration management in this we are focusing on ensuring network devices are configured with the best practices like we are using the updated devices and these devices have updated technology if we want to replace any device we have to replace that device uh, device timely so usually network administrator control automation tools to track and manage configuration changes if any type of protocol needs to change or any type of new a software needs to be installed on different devices that automation tools will detect that and then it will give a notification of that changing performance management in this we are analyzing a network and maintaining a required network performance level to ensure business operations are not negatively impacted like over services may uh, must not be unavailable to any person like if we are um, uh, running a e-commerce business we make it possible to everyone can be facilitated by using over website or by using over server so every can uh, uh, every person can place an order and if he or she want to track the order 
we have the facilities of that so he or she can track their orders some of the critical metrics relevant to the performance is include network capacity and the bandwidth configuration uh, next one is fault management in this we have to identify if there is any problem like one person is saying that we are unavailable to that person or uh, they have placed another order and uh, the website is showing another products to that person so these uh, there can be any type of fault that can be hardware fault or that can be software fault so that is the responsibility of um, administrator to identify that fault and know what is the root cause behind that fault and then it is the responsibility of manager to fix that issues no security management that is the most important thing we have to make over data secure like if we are going uh, talking about the e-commerce in e-commerce we are using the credit cards and if any hacker is hacking over data we will not be reliable person or we will not be reliable organization to over clients so we have to make it sure that over data is secure so we have to make a security management so over data must not be go towards another person or any unauthorized person so since an it network is a critical to business operations it is imperative to ensure it's protected from various network based threats network administrators can use firewalls and monitoring tools to help ensure the network is safe and no one is attacking to over data if anyone is trying to attack towards over data they can be blocked now as i told you that security is the best thing uh, most important thing so we have to make the solutions for the uh, providing the security that is the basic problem or that is the most commonly problem that is occurred inside the network infrastructures the problem is over security for example for that security we are using the firewall solution firewall solution can be available for different environments such as own virtual machines cloud based firewalls are if we are using any type of it networks we can use the firewalls a firewall a firewall is a network security device that monitors and filters incoming and outgoing network traffic it will check each and every person's identity like it will check either the new person has entered inside over network if the new person has entered either that is relevant to over network or uh, organization or not so that acts like a guard at its most basic a firewall is essentially the barrier that sits between a private internal network and a public internet a firewall's main purpose is to allow non threatening traffic and in and keep dangerous traffic out like a guard maintain the security of any organization same in case of network infrastructure firewall is providing the security like that diagram shows how firewall is securing the private networks from the hackers so advantages of computer network file sharing we can share the files resource sharing like scanners printers can be shared among different persons within single organization we can use a single printer and can facilitate 20 persons 30 person up to many persons so communication it is possible to communicate from one location to another if we are sitting at home it is possible to share the files or make it possible to communicate with the person that is available inside the organization convenience in data is accessible through an internet connection like we can access over banking transactions by sitting at home or we can buy and sell the things by using the internet cost if Uh, we are sharing the resources the cost will be reduced like if we are purchasing the uh, printers for any individual person that will be a cost uh, that will go towards uh, that will go towards the high cost storage like in the servers we have a lot of storage so we can utilize that storage or can share that storage so that also provide a remote storage now why we are using the network infrastructures as company grows there are multiple clients who are going to access their websites 
so they have to use a network so the fundamental foundations of your network gets put under the stress maintaining your network reliability so as to avoid costly downtime incidents are worse loss data becomes more and more important because we are now facing uh, many problems we have to facilitate millions of over clients and we have to make the data more secure so we have to use the network infrastructure that provides the security are the monitoring tools if a disaster was were to strike your company having a reliable and well supported network will make recovery much easier like we have backups if we are using the network infrastructure and if uh, suddenly our data is erased or there is any disaster came we can easily recover over data in an age of remote works as a result of coronavirus you your company network is likely under more strain than ever before so we can remotely work by sitting at our homes each or during which your network suffers issues is an hour where you your entire business grinds to halt so if your network or internet connection is not working you will not do any work or you will not be able to make communication with your clients so making forward looking investment into this critical but often forgotten uh, forgotten infrastructure pays dividends in the futures and outsides of your company network infrastructure serves to protect the network and endpoint device from the attacks as firewalls are providing the security towards our network so that is part of network infrastructure so that's why we have to use our network infrastructures whether it's your firewall stopping unauthorized traffic at the edge or on a network security appliances detecting and preventing an in progress malware attack network hardware software and services all are a big part of your company's cyber security so it will secure your data in a particular business commonly connect their detection systems directly to the firewall so that they can stop attacks as soon as they are detected in a similar manner logging and management systems can be connected to other infrastructure to provide a oversight so that provides security and security is the most common thing our most common issue nowadays we are facing so we have to use the network infrastructures is there any issue in the lecture